When we get to studying linear functions and different ways of writing them, we come across several forms that are acceptable in mathematics. The first that we're going to study is called standard form. Now the appearance and characteristics of a standard form equation are that it has the appearance of ax plus by equals c, a, b, and c have to be real numbers, and a and b are not both zero at the same time. Now there are some who feel that a, b, and c have to be integers, so no fractions or decimals permitted, and also a lot feel that a should be a positive number, but that isn't necessarily a characteristic. The further you get in math, some of these might be refined or changed, but this is where we're starting at. Now, in order to achieve a horizontal line from a standard form equation, we simply have to have it such that a would equal zero. If a equaled zero, then our equation would come down to just by equals c. Solving this for y, we have y equals c divided by b. And we have a perfectly horizontal equation. From a graphing perspective, we go up to whatever value that is, and we simply stay on it for the duration of the graph. Conversely, for a vertical line, we would have to have it such that b equaled 0, and then simply ax would equal c. Solving for x, we would have x equals c divided by a, and from a graphing standpoint, we'd go out to that value of c divided by a and have a perfectly vertical line. Of course, this is not a function. Now, the way we're going to go about graphing these is that we're going to alternately make a0 and b0 and work our ways through the different systems. So, how exactly does this happen? If we have these equations where x minus 3y equals 12, if I need to graph this, I'm going to graph by what are called the intercepts. So I make a quick table of values, x and y, and what happens if x is 0? Well, if x is 0, then I have the equation negative 3y equals 12, and solving this for y, I divide by negative 3, y equals a negative 4. So I have the coordinate 0, negative 4. Then I will make y 0, and I have x equals 12, and there's no solving involved there. I simply have x equals 12. Now in order to graph this, I will set up a set of axes here, and say here. Then go through and plot my two points. I know that I have the point 0, negative 4, which is here, and 12, 0, which would be here. And then in order to make my line, I simply draw a straight connector through those two points, and I have my function. Next, we can do this for our second equation. So I will again make my quick table of values, x and y. If x is 0, then I have 5y equals negative 10. Dividing by 5, I have y equals a negative 2. Next, if I make y 0, I'd have 2x equals negative 10, so x would have to be a negative 5. Then going through, again setting up my axes, and then plotting my points, I have 0, negative 2, and I have negative 5, 0. Then, connecting the points, I end up with a graph that looks relatively like that. Now, when you are plotting your points, the exact coordinate is helpful, and then when you draw your line, use a straight edge to connect those points. So, graphing standard form, we are simply finding these intercepts. So we, when we run into the x-axis, this is the x-intercept, y is 0. When we run into the y-axis, that is the x, and that is the y-axis, and the x-value is 0. So how can we take this 
and be able to apply it in such a way that it has more meaning for us. So let's say you're buying supplies for a party. You're expecting 200 people to show up based on invitations set out and those that responded. You can buy disposable plates and packages of either 20 or 50. If X is the number of small packages of plates and Y is the number of large packages, write an equation to model the number of packages of each that you would need to buy to have enough for the party. We're going to graph the function and then find three points that give exactly 200 plates. Well, the way we're going to work on this is we have to start out with our function. So we have AX plus BY equals C. X is the number of small packages, so how many plates come in a small package? And that answer can be found here. It is 20. So I end up with 20X. Next, Y is the number of large packages, and we're told that there are 50 plates to a large package, so I get plus 50Y. And how many do I need all together? That is the number of people expected to come, so 200. Making a table of values for this, X and Y. If X is 0, I have 50Y equals 200. Solving for Y, I would need 4 packages of that. Whereas if Y was 0, then 20X equals 200. And dividing by 20, I get X equals 10. So now I can pull up a graphing grid and set up my axes for it. Then go through and plot my point, or my points. I have the point 0, 04 right about here. And I have 10, 0 right here. Now it would be nice to be able to just buy four packages of 50, but let's say this place I'm going to purchase them doesn't have it. So what are some other ways I could do it? 10 packages of 20 would just be cumbersome. So if I can go through and connect these points perfectly, I would end up with different sets that would be able to be used. For instance, I know I can buy 0 and 4. I can buy 10 and 0. But then looking at my graph, I see that right here at 5, 2, I have another combination of plates that would work. So 5, 2 becomes a possibility. So we're able to write the equation, make the table, create the graph, and select out some possible combinations of items that would work. So a lot going on in standard form. But this is our basic piece we're going to start with. We'll have others that are coming. Make sure you have these ones down. Again, this is one of my favorites for graphing because it is rather quick just to find the two points.